Hi, Dabi here, and today we have a new episode in the art review series. And today we'll be checking out the work of a bunch of people. Instead of just focusing on one artist, we'll be tackling uh, a bunch of artists. Um, just because they don't have much work featured. Uh, for example, for this guy or for this artist, JDH, uh, it's a very long username. Um, I found these ones on Pinterest, but when I checked their Twitter page, there's nothing in there. They don't have any posts, a media, um, replies. I think they deleted it maybe, uh, which is sad because they do have a very interesting style here. But yeah, basically we'll, we'll, we'll go through a bunch of different artists here. And also because I have like a, a bunch of different images here from different artists. And yes, warning, some of it is AI. So if you're not into that, just, you know, skip it ignore it but basically these are images i've found mainly on pinterest that just uh, stood out to me in some way that i want to kind of uh because you know how sometimes you just scroll online and you want you just you just feel like you need to have that image with you just because reasons right so i think these were from last sunday so i want to go through them because i think last sunday i had like 600 tabs open on their browser and uh, right now I was able to drop it down to just 500 so that's progress <laughs> it's still a lot but uh yeah so we'll try to find some takeaways here and just explore some art because yeah I do download and drag these images in but I don't actually have the opportunity to kind of you know actually go in and see some see the uh the actual artwork right so this art review um, Sunday special, I guess. We'll call it the Sunday special show in the Art Review series where we just dive in or I just dive in on um, the binging sessions I have on Twitter or Pinterest, right? Where I just download like a bunch of different photos or artworks. And uh, yeah. So we'll start here. We'll start with this one. Now again, if you look at their style, very impressionistic. It's always my go-to style. Um, or it, it's just the style that makes the most sense to me. Because that's kind of how I behave. I'm very like wild, um, crazy, unrefined, sketchy. So impressionistic kind of, kind of paintings, artworks tend to fascinate me the most. But again, it's so sad because you can't actually see like the bulk of their work. Because they did sort of hide it or delete it on their twitter so i will still give their tag in the description below but just expect nothing for now uh but yeah and i think they're using just one brush and this brush although it has texture you'll only really see it from the brush spacing a little bit it does have a bit of that jitter effect right here right but most of it is it does have a lot of opacity um within so texture wise it's not that heavy it's just really in the uh, the edges um by the way in pure if i have no idea how to delete lines automatically like i have to use the eraser tool and actually go at it manually and i wish i could just delete everything at once um so if you know how to do that comment it below here we have a different sort of uh, i'm going to assume they start off with like these really small gestural line works and then they start painting things in afterward right but what I, what I love about their work is that I think they do a lot of lines in the, in the beginning where they just sort of find the flow of things so I think it starts off very gestural I mean look at this image right here even though she's just it's more of a it's a single sort of line uh running down the center here right but if you look at all of their lines here, it's like they're trying to find something, right? And the lines just seem so alive here. And then this chick basically just appears as they keep doing the, as they keep finding the right sort of flow for their piece. Again, if you zoom in, the actual brush doesn't have texture. It's just the uh, the jitter maybe. And maybe the spacing of it 
uh, but it's fairly smooth, right? And they don't have actual line work where it's like a, an inked thing. Like the lines are not designed, I guess, to be sort of a uh, be on their own like they need to be painted over uh, eventually right look at that pretty cool and, and I think this shows you that it's it's better to just have like a few favorite brushes so you can just focus on making art number one you develop your proficiency more in the thing but also your portfolio like you get to produce a lot way more artwork then if you keep playing around with your brushes you know that's kind of my weakness too because i like experimenting a lot and the downside is i don't produce a lot but look at that and when they paint they go from small brush to big brush very quickly you can tell by the amount of strokes they make right um yeah I'm not sure how they do the background. I think it's just uh, maybe they blur it a bit. It's so sad not being able to see the rest of their work. Look at that. I love the tail here, right? It, sometimes it does look a little bit like an oil painting, right? Pretty cool. And I like this look right here where you show a little bit of that, those lines, how they flow, right? And then you paint maybe underneath it first. And, and maybe if you want, you can paint over it eventually. Although I do notice for the faces and everything, they tend to be very clean, right? And if there are like shifts in values, shift in values or hues, it's very soft. Um, they would have to use some kind of soft brush to achieve that. Right? So if you're the impress oh rake brush right here, uh, if, if you're the impressionistic sketchy type, you know you can do something like this. Um, yeah, let's so let's move on. Now this one I think I found it was this piece and this piece that got me into their sort of work. It reminds me of another artist named Ask something Askie. Just search for this one. She's a very big, well-known artist, an anime sort of style artist. And I think if you look at this girl's face, the proportions of the face remind me of uh, that artist. If you look at this specific sketch, look, look at the, the line work. There's no actual like inks. It almost looks like a, a pencil sketch. Uh, check, out, check out the work of Loish. She does, she does the same thing when or where she'll draw something with her pencil brushes and then when she paints she sh sort of mixes it with the pencil sketch like she'll use it and so some of the pencil lines will disappear but she will leave some of those initial gestural lines in and, and it just adds a little bit of uh, energy right it may not look as finished but it's gonna be quite pleasing to the eye if you include some of those initial gesture lines right now personally for me I wouldn't go this far because uh, or this route because it's a bit too clean for my tastes it still looks good but I do like for example uh, I just like these types more than say this one or this one because it's more like raw and real and just uh, it has a sketchy sort of vibe to it although some parts are going to be very sort of clean and rendered and orderly but yeah you know as you go further down it does get a little more uh, loose right so oh here we have oh it's sad it's a a fan art piece a demon slayer uh this would have to be rengoku his mom right this is sort of in the the ending scene of the the movie uh, but i do like the painting here it's a bit more painterly right and if you look at this style of painting again it's also not just the proportions themselves but the the way it's painted it reminds me really of ask something askie askize something 
one of my favorite pieces of their work, um, ASK, is their Evangelion character sketches of like Shinji, uh, As- Asuka, Asuka or Mari, and the the guy with the the gray hair or silver hair. Right. Look at the soft edges; they're very subtle. Right. You have a light area here, a dark area here, and the, the, the spaces or these sorts of edges where they meet, they tend to be hued up. You know, there's some color in there. Right? And I like how they chunk the hair. Now, this one's a bit more clean. This is more like a character sheet, right? go up here same thing very and I do like how you leave some of those contour lines in the edge you know you'll see it a lot in the hair and the face be careful though because you might overdo it especially for this area you want to keep it very like simple and minimal So this is from Arcane. I haven't actually seen the show, but... Oh, look at the hair. Damn. Look at that. It's so... Look at how it's not perfect, meaning it's not like super tight. It's almost like a gouache painting, but it's... Oh my god. I like it. Look at this area right here. Look at the contrast. Right? Oh. And the eyes are nice and pretty too. Everything is. The mouth even. Even the teeth. She has some nice fangs too. Damn. Lots of like swooping lines. You'll see it a lot with the hair. Right? That. Whether it's their figure, right? Everything is like swoopy. It's almost like there's smoke, you know? Uh, right? So even if their character is like still one shot, there's always something about them that moves. Whether it's their clothing, their hair, their powers, right? So this is again Rengoku. I like their painting style. This one seems more opaque. Um, it almost look, looks like a gouache painting because gouache does tend to look more opaque. Right? Look at the variety. Look at how this is like lighter, like almost like a dark grayish green. And then this is more bluish green. And you have one part here where it's being hit by light. Um, so there are subtle variations in hues here. Or is it hues or values? I think it's values, right? But it looks so consistent, the colors. Like they belong in the same sort of palette. So I like that. So I guess they're not going crazy with the colors. They, they, they do like to keep it rather contained and simple. So let's go here. More of a quick sketch, but again, look at the flowiness. It's just one character, right? But the flow of the, the dress here. The sword even looks so nice. The hair. Look at that. Goes like this. Very cool. So big swooping lines. Maybe that's a takeaway. Big swooping lines. For this Haya Mafair uh, artist. Um, so here we have Chiyuran. They don't have much work on their Twitter, but they do have these. My favorite picks, I guess. Um, very, I, I usually, even though I like looking at this, um, I probably would not go with this route just because, number one, I, I think there's actually a little bit of a um, doubt when it comes to my own skills. Like, can I actually go this far and render things this way? I mean, look at how high quality this thing is. You know, just, just think Sakimi-chan, you know, those kind of illustrations where you really go in 
because uh, when you go to YouTube, a lot of artists, the pros, the experienced, they do zoom in a lot in their work. And the reason why is because they do need to go in and actually render a lot of these things. Um, and it's really meant to be like a, a big sort of illustration, a high level illustration that could be turned into prints, posters, you know. Um, and like you're meant to actually zoom in. It's not just like here. You know, like everything is supposed to be somewhat enjoyable to look at. And uh, there, it is kind of intimidating, intimidating, but it's it's nice. Right? But we can learn something. For example, composition seems to be something that's common here. Yeah. They're almost always in some kind of diagonal position. If you, if you zoom out, look at this. Right? This one's parallel to it. Her legs, perpendicular, kind of to the side, maybe a 45, 60 degree maybe. Um, here we have it's almost a, a, a perpendicular thing with the legs and then it points here focal point right here focal point right here very interesting look at that her head is right here her legs sort of are parallel obviously um, her hands her arm here is parallel Sort of perpendicular, goes this way, and then a swooping motion here to sort of support the entire figure. So I guess this is her like tail, her shark. Is she a shark? Some kind of fish, right? So in this in this image here, it's actually her both her legs that's sort of uh, supporting her. And yeah, so almost like carrying the weight. Right. But here is the weight is on this side the bike is carrying the weight maybe but are they you know when people do, when artists do this sorts of uh, these sorts of illustrations do, do they think about this or is it just like a natural thing I think it's more intuitive and uh, yeah but I do recommend you check out this guy's uh, this artist's work I will link again their page in the description below if you zoom in it does get really good very smooth not much texture no texture really at all um although they play a lot with the value variation right and even the the way the shadows are done or some edges are done soft edges you'll see this a lot in anime work where they're really good at using the mixer brush or soft brushes and uh, and some parts are just so like tight you know hard edged now for this artist, they do show, I think they do like a line work thing where it's meant to be, where it's more finished and then they render along with that line work. Right? Uh, these types of illustrations would take forever, for me anyway, and it's also hard, ugh, but it's nice to look at. Damn. So let's move on to like the majority here. Uh, this artist, I, I, I may do a review of this guy right here. Um, I'm not sure if I already if I already have, but they remind me of an of an artist we already reviewed, Ra Set Su something. In terms of the shape design, it's very similar. Very dynamic, very sharp, very exaggerated. Um, now this one's a different artist. I think I've reviewed them before. I'm not sure. I, I have to check, but they're very sort of high quality, um, high level, just extremely rendered, right? Ugh. Uh, this one looks very pastel, right? Very textured. Look at that. It's so pretty. Damn. So they do like the pastel canvas sort of look or textured look in their work. But they do render it 
to a very high degree eventually. Kind of like this. Look at that. It does lean more on realism than most artists. Um, reminds me a little bit of a... What's their name? I'll write it down. Sang. Delan. One of my favorite artists. And this guy also has a thing for... Yeah. There you go. So for my um, enjoyers out there, check out Sang Delan as well. Um, but yeah, let me just go to the... I, I'll, I'll have to check if I already did an art review of this guy or this chick. Uh, this this would have to be one of my favorite pieces too. Look at this. Egyptian chick. But she's like Korean. She looks Korean. Um, super cool. And she's alongside like Anubis. She could be like Cleopatra or something. Look at that. And there's a bit of that, what was that watercolor effect. You know how some water, when you paint with watercolor, um, the edges bleed? Look at this. Pretty cool. See that? It just adds that natural look to it. Um, right? Ooh, and it's perfect for like sharp edges here. You could just define the edge via value, but you can just add a bit of the contour line just to emphasize the edge. Not everywhere. You know, as you go further out the edge, you can start mixing at the edge and blending it, but yeah. So you do see some of this initial line work or uh, sketch or drawing. It's more of a finished drawing because uh, they do show it in the end, but you know. Yeah. Heavy on the realism here. Right? Especially the proportions and everything. Some sketches here. But I think I like this one too. But, uh, oh, pretty cool. And this one. This one's more of a quick one. Quick sketch. Halloween theme. I think this is one of her or their recent pieces. Right? And they do love using their texture brushes. Look at that. They're so pretty. And look at the armor, like, priced. Um, so let me just zoom out, because, uh, oh, I think I found, I refound their work via this piece. I like this one, too. Damn, she's, like, such an angel here. Oh, God. And, yeah, I, I, they're going for, like, a pastel sort of look. Oh, check out Jean. Uh, Jean. Shin. Hopefully I'm saying it right. Zine Chin? Is it Chin? They do like the pastel. Although for them, they're a bit smoother with their pastel look. And this one, they do like to uh, show off the texture a little bit. Right? And even the pencil sort of drawing, they like showing that off too. For example here, right? You can see it. It looks good. Because if it's small enough, like you can, it, it does blend well with the painting eventually. I mean, you can always like paint over it, but you know, it it has a look that, uh, or it's very stylistically good. I think out of all their work, uh, it, they mostly do women. I mean, I get it, but mm, I'm not sure where this is from. This could be like fan art. I'm not sure, but. Damn, look at their... Oh, they're so... Demure. Oh, this is Makima. So hot. Even their hands are so pretty for some reason. Jesus. Oh, so this is the sketch first. So maybe they do it in grayscale and then they do it in color. Um, It's a very solid process. Figuring out the values first and then adding the color later. Uh, but it's still hard though, right? Because if you do it, if you do it that way, you can figure out like the lighting, um, the forms and everything, the structure in this stage, and then once you're done with that, you can just easily move on to like the colors. Pretty cool. 
So this is one of their AI. Oh no, because I do have a bunch of AI here. Oh, AI art. Um, so I, I remember there was a time when... Uh, You know how you know how an art station when AI first dropped in, a lot of artists are, sort of did this a uh, thing where they would uh, create this sort of rebellious art piece, being anti AI, right? As you can, this is the A, this is the I, and this is the the cross out, and this is the the circle. Um, so a lot of artists use that sort of baseline. And it was actually pretty cool, very creative, and it was more of like um, it's kind of like Inktober, you know. Um, but yeah, I think eventually ArtStation found a way to remove those posts on the main page. Um, but I do like this. It does look like the. It still has a pastel look. They like to leave in those drawing marks, right? Um, I do like this this more. Look at that. Oh, and look at their faces. They're so cute and hot. Um, so definitely one of my faves, I guess. Uh, see, I, I don't often have the opportunity to actually zoom in. Whenever I'm doing my binging, Pinterest, Twitter, art station sessions, I just drag images in. And I don't have enough time to... Because I'm so excited to look at the next piece. Like, I don't have enough time to actually, like, look look at and zoom in and see. Oh. Right? They do show a lot of the initial line work. And it looks good. It has... It, it, it's, it's a style on its own, right? You can do it this way. And if you want to continue, render it more. Make the image bigger and do this, right? Oh. Jesus. So, if I haven't reviewed, well, I'm kind of reviewing their work now. Uh, check out Sang Soon Jeong or 7200S. Okay, so here's the bulk of everything. Um, I'm going to put this. Wait, let me just. Because some of these are kind of risque, so let me just put them here. I do have some not safer work stuff here, but. I'm not gonna risk it guys because YouTube um, it does get limited ad revenue um, so yeah you know what we'll go here first now this is more different it's basically a shoe a very interesting shoe design um, look at that now is that comfortable I'm not sure because I don't wear heels but it looks so interesting and it's very futuristic. Um, so here we have some foot uh, references. It's actually from uh, Seedus Arts. Can even feature their work? I don't know. They're a bit on the not safe side, but... Oh, sorry. One of my... Let me just write it down. Control D. Seedus Arts. And yes. Right? So for you weirdos out there, there you go. And they just shared the, these images for reference. I'm not sure if they did it themselves, who knows, but... Very, um, interesting. Oh, here we have some, like, anime. Not anime, but some shortcuts I found. Someone shared it. Um, so maybe this could be useful in the future whenever you make a comics or manga or any kind of dialogue piece where people are talking um, you can use this part right here as reference right but these, these these are more for like animators or comic slash manga people um, but I am interested one day in doing like comic slash manga or like doujin doujinshi you know one of those types you know what I mean uh -huh. you know I want to end up on N hentai eventually um, that's one of my dreams or sub dreams so I did find in one of my pinch or in one of my segments in when I was like binging on Pinterest I did find art where people were drawing either an actual photo because I did want to see how other people worked 
in their workspaces. Um, but there's also like, I, I also checked out artwork where they actually showed artists or people working. Because right? it's, it's, it's just cool to look at, you know. By the way, I'm not sure how long this session will take, but it may take longer than usual. Um, but F it. it. It is a Sunday special, so we can just relax. Um, yeah. This is pretty cool. Uh, I do want an arm that's kind of long. I do have a monitor arm, but it doesn't go as long or as low as I thought. Um, I have the Eveo. I think it's called E... Let me just write it down. E-V-O? Eveo? It's okay, um, I recommend it, but it's not, it doesn't go as low as other arms out there, monitor arms. And you ha and if you have like a big tablet like this, I think it's nice to have it go lower. Um, it's kind of hot. <laughs> yeah, I want to be able to do pieces like this where I just show myself drawing too, right? Kind of like this, like this, like this. It's just so cool to look at. Oh, even this chick is pretty cool too. And you can tell she's like animating based on the the software. I think she's using Clip Studio Paint or Photoshop. Maybe. So here, it, it, now this one's more of like a mix. You have like a photo in the background, right? And then you draw like your anime character right here. Um, it's a good mix. It's like photo bashing, you know, where you're mixing photos and actual artwork i mean a lot of monk people comic people do this right i like this one now this one they have a really messy ass room so we got some bras here some guy here so i'm guessing she just arrived from work and she's sort of a a 28 year old <laughs> woman who's just what the freaking look at oh look oh my oh my <laughs> so you have this you have a uh, obviously the tissue box with a bunch of is this me <laughs> jeez it's so fun but look at the storytelling here right you can tell a lot via details oh she has a bunch of pills this could be like a vitamin thing. Um, Amazon maybe. A bunch of boxes. Right now I do have a bunch of Amazon boxes here. Oh my god. And my room is... Well, it's not this messy, but... Right? I want to be able to do this one. It's just so fun being able to like tell stories. Um, I do think these people do use a little bit of 3D. I do know Clip Studio Paint has like 3D capabilities. Um, so you can like, it's gonna be easier for you to like draw environments faster. Instead of uh, basically you have a model, right? And you can just extract the lines. Oh, sorry. So you don't have to draw everything. You can just focus on stuff like this, the, the character, uh, maybe some details, right? It just helps you save time. But that whole process is so foreign to me right now. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Easy. Look at this. I just thought this was kind of inspirational. You're kind of alone. Imagine being alone. Early in the morning. Or maybe the sun is setting. No one is there. Everyone just, you know, everyone left. And you're still there just working on your thing. There's something so, like, artsy about it, you know? Yeah. And I like pieces like this where they draw their room or their art spaces, their workspaces. It just adds that personality. I want to be able to share my own room, but in instead of just showing a photo or a video, I, I want to show you at least, like, a, a drawing. I want to, And it's challenging, too. It and it's... I feel like it, it would be fun to draw. Even like this, you don't have to draw the entire room, you know? You can just draw like your actual workspace, right? 
So they have a Wacom. I think this is a Wacom tablet here. And they have a Mac. You know, we used to have a Mac. In our in our library, we all had Macs. And uh, I had no idea how to use it, guys. It was so freaking weird. It's like a foreign um, interface, you know? I mean, I have an iPhone, but... You know, the whole, like, iOS, Mac, PC thing is like... Ugh. Uh, it looks very unique, but it's like, eh. Is this guy smoking? Rebel, right? So he's drawing himself, as you can see. Yeah. I could do that eventually. I, I don't want to do this sort of thing. And in this case, the background is left white. I mean, the only thing with lines here is actually the character, but... These parts, it's all just shape or values, no line work really, as much. And I love the colors too, very um, retro-ish. Random chick. Uh, so even stuff like this, look how cool it looks. Oh, this woman, this artist, she has like a very, she does draw, I mean, she's drawing like a webtoon or something. So it makes sense, but. This chair looks freaking cool too. And a high ceiling space. I'm so jealous. Because <laughs> um, I want to, you know, I do fantasize about being this sort of like elusive artist, you know. You know, in my own workspace, in my own studio, right? And these images sort of inspire me in a way. Look at that. Oh, by the way, guys, if you're going to do artwork, do this. Or just write it because sometimes here, here's what here's what's effed up. People will draw their signature, right? No one understands it. God. <laughs> How will people do, do this? Do the whole at thing. Write your tag. Your, your, uh, type it down and then do the, the signature if you want. So people can find you, damn. Um, these ones are cool, like these three. Let me just talk about these ones. Uh, you know what? I may not even edit this. I don't know. Because a one hour... I can just post this raw video and maybe add some music quickly, but that's it. Um, uh, yeah, this one looks... This looks cool, right? So he has a tablet here, the headphones. Two monitors, I have two monitors too. What's well, actually... One monitor on the side, and the other monitor is actually my tablet. Sometimes I draw on it, and if I don't draw on it, it becomes this thing. Right? Now what I don't see is the microphone. But I do, I, I want to be able to draw something like this. Um, so basically lines, right? Quick line work, but the colors are just basically like flat. Maybe sh some shadows, but. Kind of like this as well. So basic line work, right? And then flats with some shadows. It's a very, I mean, look at this. They look fun to do. Now this one right here may be a little more complicated, right? Because there is some painting happening. Uh, but guess what? Look at this. It still looks fun. So. Yeah. And I could make it like a, we, we could make it like a series out of it. You know, if you're if you're losing ideas, if you don't know what to draw, just draw your own space. Or draw the space that you would like. This is from a screenshot from the... It's a recent movie. From... I think it's called Look Back. Look. Shot. By the way, the pen here on Pure F. This thing that I'm using right now. The stabilization is too strong. I'm not sure how to edit it. Is there a way? Because it's too strong, man. Um, and again, if you guys know how to erase things quickly, like with the button, with like a shortcut. Oh, sorry. I'd appreciate that. 
I like drawings like this too, where it's more grungy, more raw. Right. Look at that. Oh. So she's drawing herself again. Maybe she's in, in her dorm room. Cactus. And you can tell most of it is maybe based in like 3D, who knows? Or SketchUp or something. Or you could just uh, do this, take a photo. Although you would need like proper lighting and everything and then um, you can write your equipment and shit. But I thought this looked cool. Now this one's nice, you have a bunch of speakers here. Uh, monitor 1, monitor 2 and you have like your tablet here. Ooh. And then another tablet. I think these are both by Wacom. I do have this tablet, although it's kind of old. And it's way smaller. The Intuos Pro S. It's, it's the same version, but just smaller. And the speakers are so large. Uh, and the microphone, it's important nowadays, especially if you're like marketing yourself, doing some audio work. And you know, doing voiceovers are important. Although there are artists out there who don't, even, who don't even talk in the videos. So don't worry about it if you're not really into talking. Excuse me. And their layer management looks nice. Kind of. Mine is just like in the back of this Wacom or in, the uh, in my case, there's a whole area here where it's just a bunch of freaking wires. Uh, oh God. Let's look at some more. Oh, these are... Uh, guys, ladies, gentlemen, there are some AI pieces here, so... Uh, don't cry. Um, I like this one, too, where the line work is kind of loose and messy. But you can still tell some story there, right? Yeah, low-quality image. So this one feels more like a painting study. But uh, yeah, so let's go here. I just thought that these were interesting, you know. I uh, yes, guys, it's most likely AI. Um, I mean, right? Uh, but it looks so cool. I remember seeing this on Pinterest and I was like, wow. Um, maybe it wasn't so much this one, but I think it was this piece that got, got me first. Um, and then it led to this piece and other, uh, and other uh, um, pieces. But imagine being in a room like this again. Uh, the high ceiling thing is going to be, oh, it's so cool. A bunch of screens everywhere. Your bed is right there. Right. It's a big ass bed. You have like your desk here, your work area. This whole thing is basically your work area. Maybe you have a big window here, light comes in. And you have like blackout curtains or whatever. It would be so cool. It's like you're living in the future in a way, right? Um, we can imagine, we can dream, guys. Now, this is kind of cool. I like the vibes too. It's like a lo-fi sort of inspired piece. Yes, it's AI, but I can appreciate nice visuals, guys. Um, and you know, it, people... Because it shows you that people get attached to certain images. Because I know it just by looking at this, uh, this piece. I'm getting kind of attached because you know, I'm seeing myself there. Although the chick is kind of hot, so... That's a plus, but the point is, it just, it shows you or reminds you of someone working at home, headphones on, pen in hand, taking notes, facing your screen here, and just focusing. And, um, 
you know this journey guys is a bit um it's a bit interesting because there's no like proper framework you sort of have to figure it out your own and find your own space this one's nice now this just feels expensive high windows floor to ceiling windows that's gonna be expensive but look at the look at the skyline here oh the view oh oh the maybe they have like curtains here that kind of drop down i'm not sure but um one day <laughs> we can dream at the very least it's very inspiring you know now this one's uh i think this is a uh, not ai um and it's a, a fan art of lucy from uh cyberpunk edge runners same thing with the the images above um very techno room oh the, the this uh, the ceiling seems a bit low so here we have some AI stuff. This one. And the one above. But, oh, this one's a big ass tablet. Or maybe she's just re really small. But. Again, why do you get, why do I get attached to these kinds of Im images? Because I see myself. And it captures the moment. Like when you look at this image, like you know what this means. Even if you zoom out, oh, um, it's an artist, a designer working on something. I just want to do art, guys, and just you know be live this lifestyle of um, being a designer, artist, whatever you call it. Call it. It's. Because I don't really feel like I belong anywhere, you know? Right? I feel like this is me. I'm the chick. The cute chick with the cat ears working on something. Being a weeb. This one's cool too. I love the color palette. Yes, it's AI, I think. But, um... But again, you can take away something from this. You don't have to be as detailed. For example, you see you see a lot of like jumbled stuff here. Like you can just suggest uh, things. You don't have to draw and define everything. You know, people are still gonna get you, right? Now, in her case, and for this character, I think it's based off of like a musician, like a digital a digital artist who's a musician who does music. Um, maybe she's like a producer, a DJ. I don't know what the proper term is, but now this one's more like geeky. Um, so let's zoom out here and find something different. Uh, so here we have some. Uh, it's mostly gonna be AI, I think. These ones are not, maybe. Again, Lucy from Edge Runners. Uh, you can't hear it, but uh, my music was sort of a uh, bugging out there or out here. Um, yes, even though it's AI, let's before you start, come oh, traitor. <laughs> It looks cool and we can learn something, right? It is good for reference. You can use AI as reference. Um, although you have to be more aware because sometimes you can copy like mistakes, right? But it shows you that even though it's not always perfect, you can get away with a lot of things, right? I do like this one a little more, right? Very hot. This one too. Look, this one's a bit more finished looking. Pretty cute though. Oh, this is from uh, 
Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I forgot her name. Uh, I like this sort of poster look here. Because I do have some... Um, I'm going to be doing a product review of some markers. So I need I need some reference, some references that had a lot of color in them. So I downloaded these. I think this is AI. Is it? Kind of. Now this isn't super high quality. Ooh. Is this AI? Could be. Nowadays it's hard to say because it's getting better. Right? Now this one definitely is AI. Um, and it's super, it's a very big image too, but uh, the color palette is legit. So you don't have to, don't copy the things that are kind of off. Um, just take what's useful to you. So this one is an artist, Yakun Wang, her painting. Nice pose of this chick. She's trying to like attack or capture a dragon. Pretty cool. Oh, this by the way is one of my favorite pieces. It, it is, it's not AI. It's um, it, there, there used to be a channel in YouTube called China, China Digital. God, the stabilization, bro. Oh my God. But they deleted their channel for some reason. Or maybe they got banned. Who knows? But uh, this one got me. Guys. This got me into art. If you just saw, saw the video. Like it makes you want to paint. Or for me anyway so this is one of the the most one of my one of the most influential art pieces for me as an artist i think i have a video of it somewhere i, I don't even know but yeah this one's not ai someone can actually draw like this so that's pretty cool cyber chick kind of hot now this one seems like ai but i like the the way it's sort of illustrated here right Again, you're showing some, like it's not perfect, but you have some minimal line work here and it goes along with the color of the main sort of space. I just like the look. It's sort of painterly, um, very textured. It has a bit of that pastel look as well. Um, yeah, and the shapes really got me. This one is by Wash. I think it's Wash and Apple or Ibuki something. Her tag name on Twitter is Wash and Apple. And I believe in her tutorial, she used some kind of fur or cat hair. And then she turned it into some kind of brush or photo effect to look like grass. Hmm. So pretty interesting. I forgot to tag this artist, but... Um, I think there's somewhere in the open tabs I have right now. But look at that. Oh. Risque. <clears throat> there's way more in here. I don't think we have time. Because we're closing in on like an hour. Um, but yeah. There's a lot of stuff here. That I want to like explore. But again, time is the issue here. But yeah, all of this combined, they do influence me. Uh, because there's a reason why I'm even like entertaining their artwork and wanting to like download it because I want some of that in my own stuff too. So for the next episode, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue um exploring files from this or images from this file or maybe i'll start a new one because this was made a week ago uh sunday right or saturday something 
So maybe I'll be starting a new Pura file. Who knows? But yeah, I'm not. I'm not even sure what the takeaway for this for this episode is. But sometimes you don't even need a takeaway, you know. Um, you can just try to see, find something you like, and just explore stuff. Um, and, it, and it, I still recommend people to, uh, whenever you like images, download them, put them in a PRF file, and just because you need to be able to see things from afar, you know, and see what ticks for you, find patterns. What are you into? Do you tend to like colors? What kind of characters do you seem to like? Uh, what rendering styles? What uh, what art styles do you tend to gravitate towards to? Uh, this will help shape your vision for yourself, for your art style. Um, and it develops a standard, right? Now that you have all of these artists, you know what's good and what's not as good for you. Uh, you know, obviously, it, it's depending on your preferences, your tastes, but it develops a, like on average, all of this conv- combined would develop a, a standard, right? That you can hold yourself to. Like this is what's out there. So how does your work fit in? Would you download your own artwork and put it right like right here? Ooh, tough question. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it for this uh, special Sunday special episode. Um, I'll be doing this obviously every week uh, and posting it on Sunday and maybe we'll do I think an hour is good 30 minutes to say an hour it's gonna be a longer episode than usual because we're doing a lot and we're not just focusing on one artist you know uh, but yeah hopefully this, hopefully this episode is helpful to you in some way and you know what it's not really designed to be as helpful it's more just me um finding something to look at and it gives me the excuse to just uh, this one is by Yonama Yam- Yoneyama Mai I like her sketches she does full illustrations too but um, I do find her sketches more cool right Chainsaw Man fan art I believe look at that look oh look oh shit pretty hot uh, so we'll end the episode here the Sunday special art review episode and um, yeah I'll try to link some artists that I've talked about in the beginning and uh, yeah I'll see you in the next episode bye